more is like history, mm-hmm. more so than like a religion. La I clave, see the, I see the, the la beliefs. Clave llama la salsa. Um, say my forefathers has, like lessons just to learn and parent to teach their kids not to do that. There's a reason the parent tells you not to do that. Um, I don't have to go through my own personal experience for certain things. Um, I feel like it's almost like a cheat, not a cheat code, but a, 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 a shortcut. Yeah, Something that can prevent you from having to go through the same yeah. unwanted result. Right. So, so for me, I've always looked at religion as something that was meant to be understood or mastered, mm-hmm. and opposed to be, and opposed to being rejected, because I don't think we would know spirituality the way we assume it, or the wordings that we use, or things that we use, had it not been for religion. Mm-hmm. You know, like if I think of um, what most people call religions when they first came to be. Um, Look at how they started. They didn't start off as these organized branches or things like that, especially, uh, say, Judaism or Islam. Um, even Christianity in its inceptions didn't start off organized. You know, it didn't start taking on organization until really Constantine. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you get. So for me, I saw. I saw religion, when you look at it before that, you look at the aesthetics that sat in the caves, that spent their whole entire lives pondering these things. So are you almost looking at religion as an oral tradition that has evolved? Well, it, as it's well, taken on more structure and I, more I think, form? I think when it got outside of, outside of the cultural people, mm-hmm. it became more so a religion. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Anything that stayed inside of the culture of the people, it was a spiritual system. But then my other problem with religion is that as it gained, as it gained prowess, right? You also had parties that became interested in controlling it and manipulating it to their desires and their ends. It, I think, grew away from the organic tradition that it may have been when it rose from its initial roots. So, I'm so roguish. Look, you, you, oh, he got his feet up. Oh, you want who? Crazy. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. But, um. Listen, we can scroll and then talk. Oh, okay. But go ahead, sweet. I'm sorry. No problem. Um, as religion became more powerful and became more influential in people's lives, it also began to be more manipulated by the ruling class and, and twisted and bent to meet their agenda and to bring people into submission with what it was that they wanted to further. So I think it got away from its original roots largely. Now having said that, I also think that religion does offer a tremendously positive impact in a lot of ways on people's lives and that it more so for me is about the spirit with which people practice than the beliefs that they have and the effect it has on them in their lives than anything else. So. I think there's value in every religion. Well, virtually every religion. I think there's, I think there's value to be found in all religions that exist. What religions don't have value? Um, okay. <laughs> don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> I, well, I'm, I'm speaking from my perspective. And I'm just saying that I've encountered a couple of them that are based on like neo-Nazi beliefs and things oh, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That to me doesn't have any value. Nah. It's on those those fringes, extremist kind of things. Yeah. But you know, there are there, there are religions out there built around the concepts like that. Waffles so. are terrible, crazy. <laughs> they good? No, they good. They're terrible. They gooey, chewy. Yeah. They chewy, yeah. yeah. They're terrible. <laughs> That's but, unfortunate. I'm yeah. sorry. Your waffles were a disaster. Yeah, I tried to mix it with. It was unsalvageable. Hey, you don't fuck with the chicken either? No, I'm gonna fuck with the chicken. I was just, I really wanted to put, wanted to put the waffle in between. You know, you grab a piece though. Yeah, grab oh, me a piece though. Yeah, see, that's yeah. love right there. Yeah. Ah, oh, wait. Damn. Oh, your hands on. You gotta take that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Why are you, you have regrets after you take your food? My whole food concept, I want somebody to do is wash it off. Like, wash it off. Like, waffle sandwiches, waffle, like, have so many recipes for different waffles, yeah, cornbread but, yeah, waffles. but that's not the recipe. Like I did right cornbread there, right? recipe. Waffles are so amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, like jalapeno cheddar cornbread waffles. I never heard of. I never heard of it. So I, I, I don't know that. 
that one was from somebody, some chef in San Francisco that had roots in New Orleans, so I knew I would like it. <laughs> but so, okay, so, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say something stupid, go ahead. Uh, but okay, so, um, <laughs> when you, when you think of spirituality, what, what, what new revelation or something that you find through spirituality that religion lacks? Something that I find through spirituality sex. that religion lacks. Sex. Out. Sex. Right, but that's not sex. What do you mean sex? I feel like every religion in some way tries to like. Monitor sex, yeah, dictate sex. We don't want sex. this to be seen. Well, this just right there. That's me. You know, not, I'm not like that. Look like, lady, you get the fuck down, lady. Like, right? yeah. Every religion okay. is like that. Oh, but every religious, religious person is. Okay, like so that. you mean that every religion uh, teaches you to be modest? Yeah, but more than that, it's like within that culture, mm -hmm. they teach you also to kind of be ashamed of yourself. Mm -hmm. I tell, what, okay. you know where I told you I this would have been a great podcast, by the way. No, but I tell him. I, I told him just started oh, recording. I've been recording. What you talking oh, about? Okay. This is a great podcast. Welcome yeah. to the Cool Breeze Show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck, bitch, nigga. Oh, yeah. What the fuck are you saying? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. For and those of you who don't recording. know, in case you're slow, it's Heavy My Heads and Send It Masters. What up, though? Oh, shoot. Let me turn that off real quick. Absolutely. I do want to answer your question, though. You said, what is one thing that I feel like I've, that I've gotten from spirituality and not religion, right? I would say freedom. <laughs> I would say freedom because spirituality is freeing to me. It breaks chains, old belief systems, yeah. gives me a new way to handle things. Religion di divides and confines. Right. That's why I would say freedom comes with spirituality. Wait, 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 now, okay. I will say people who are religious can also be spiritual. What I'm speaking of, when I just talk about religion and the negative aspects of religion, is people who have a strong sense of religiousness but don't have any spirituality to go with it. So they're only about the rope and the myth and the yeah. the dogma. And that's what they try to beat down other people's throats as if on a loop. So people who are religious but also spiritual, they don't do that. So it's a totally different experience interacting with somebody who's got a spiritually based consciousness if they're not okay so what if I tell you what if I tell you um, you're saying that religion was meant to divide but mm. there was there was meant to be division there was meant to be division like there's meant to be religion like, plays its place okay. it plays its role now it has its place I'm not saying that we don't need it there's there's I think there are a lot of people for whom that path is needed to have them if that's what they choose, that's what their soul aligns them to, then that maybe that's what they need up until the point where they are able to choose to break free from it. So, but it does keep a lot of things in check for a lot of people, a lot of personal behavior choices. So, for some people who need it, maybe that's that's good. Yeah, for them. some people do need some those people roles. need it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so 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 well, right. wild ass nigga. Okay, but okay, but but tell me, okay, but you say that. That person really? that walk up be like, you lucky I'm But what if religion Christian. but what if religion is that making you crazy that What if it, what if religion is making you to uh to what's it called? It's, to be to be um how do you say um to liberate yourself. Like take for instance um Vedic teachings. Uh now that, that, now with, that like, I don't I classify that as spirituality, not religion. Well, well, okay. What separates that from something else? They have they have ceremonies, mm -hmm. they have traditions, mm -hmm. they have special holidays. Mm -hmm. They do their their all of all of these things, and they teach the same thing. The, the, there's no difference between liberation, mukti, you know what I'm saying, nirvana, mm -hmm. and the concept of salvation. Mm -hmm. They're all the same principles, the teachings of liberation and the liberation of the spirit. So I, I can't see how you would see one as spirituality and and the other ones as religion. Well, maybe I should be more specific. Um I'm speaking of the I'm speaking more so of the mainstream You mean Western world. Reless Western religions, yeah. Um like church church. Yeah. Like Adventist, Methodist, Catholic, Protestant. Pentecostal, you, you, whatever. Mean, you mean the Western world religions? I mean the Western world religions, yes. yes. 
Um, for me, when I look into the Eastern traditions, I see no variance there between those traditions and my understanding of certain elements of spirituality. Mm. So I, I, I include that under the umbrella of spiritual practice because ultimately um, they align with, with those things that we mentioned at the outset in terms of uh, personal experience with a divine presence or power um, that evolves and unfolds along the journey. Um, when I look at the Western religions, I see more so a group of religions that uh, creates a concept of judgment and sin more so than personal enlightenment. And they're like about legalism, rules. And yes, exactly. And pu it's very punitive. It's, it's very reinforced with punishment and things yeah. like that. Well, well, see, I don't, uh, well, see, I might be different because I, uh, um, I studied this stuff like a lot. Mm -hmm. So for me, like for instance, like the Pentecostal movement, the, the way the Pentecostal movement started was believed to be the movement of the Holy Spirit. Right. Uh, uh, a preacher who felt God and after that went around preaching about God and the Spirit moving in different places. This is how the Pentecostal, there was no organization, there was no... There was nobody setting it up like the Vatican and doing all these things. This was a movement. Mm -hmm. the, the AME church, the African Methodist church, saw the way the whites were organizing their stuff. And they said, this isn't for us. We're going to do ours like this for us. You see? So when I look at certain movements or even full gospel, you know, this was speaking on you know, the teachings entirely in how the spirit moves as well. This is the premise of the of this religion. So for me, I've seen in America great spiritual movements start. Even the Seven Day Adventist movement, a woman teaching about health, teaching about teaching about the Bible and health and how to eat and and live a clean life. You know what I mean? So for me, I don't see it as the philosophies of the West are bad, you know? And once again, to me, I don't see religion as bad. You know, I see bad people and good people or people that have a particular type and-, and Or people that twist religion. I don't bad. believe that there is, I don't believe that there's an I evil think, person. Yeah. I don't believe that on, on the planet, I don't believe that there's an evil person, but I do believe in something that that we call uh, Yetzahara. And Yetzahara is that there so are- So you don't believe that there's a single evil person? I don't- None of the people that are sitting in prison are evil. I don't believe no one is evil. I believe no one is evil. So you don't believe that demons are possessed? I don't. That? So if a demon possesses a You're person- You're not going to demons. Is a person- <laughs> But even if, yeah. What we know, what right. we can see. Right, I don't- The niggas that chop no. motherfuckers' right. heads off and shit. Right, <clears throat> right. Right, children and shit, those right. people aren't evil. No. I think that they have. I think that they have a, a inclination to do evil. I think that there are people that are more inclined to do evil or to commit evil, but they themselves aren't evil. He's saying they're humans, evil in, innately. Like. No, no, no. The, no, innately they're humans. <laughs> they're to me. This is my philosophy. Innately, humans have. There are humans that have a higher inclination to do evil. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's it's certainly true. Experiences. You see what I'm saying? That's yeah. certainly true. But I don't believe that that people in themselves... You're saying they're not born evil. No one's born evil. Is that basically saying? No, no, no. no. Some people are innately... No one is born evil. No one no one is born evil. I don't I don't believe in that. Right. Every, you're, you just be. You're born. You're born. You see? Um, and so... And I don't believe that anyone is perfect. Just like I don't believe anyone is evil, I don't believe anyone is perfect. I don't think that I don't think that you can be perfect. This is just a, this is a quote of mine. I always say, no one no one um, can be perfect. You can only allow spiritual things to have that perfect work in you. You know what I mean? So um, the only things that are, are perfect are things that are pure. You know what I mean? So um, and those are spiritual things. You know, so you have to allow spiritual things to be perfected in you. You have to allow love to be perfected in you. You have to allow patience to be perfected in you. You have to allow 
joy to be perfected and have its good and perfect work done in me. You know what I mean? But I don't I don't believe that a person is good. None is good but the Father. You know, none is good but God. You know, so for me, I, I and I, I take that the way it is. You know, that's just for me. But I don't believe a person is evil. Just like there's none good but God. You know, I don't believe that there's any that are evil. I believe that there are people that commit evil acts. Is anyone good? Is anyone good? Isn't that an icy bar? Right. So. There's none good to me but God, you know? There's none good, there's none evil. And so where does that, I don't know where that mean? leave everyone in between? No, but see, this is... Searching. This, no, but this is, <laughs> this is how you have flow. No, but this is what I'm saying. So if no one is good and no one is evil, but people still can do good, yeah, they still, still can't do, do evil. You see, they still can't mm -hmm. commit acts that are evil. They still mm -hmm. can't commit acts that are good. And how do you determine what is good and what is evil? It is based on what the will is or what needs to be done in that situation. I actually for, really for agree with you. Flow. I agree with you 100%. You, you see what I'm saying? So, uh, like, if, if it, it, just like I was talking about um, yesterday about uh, masculinity and femininity, right? What determines what's masculine? Who determines what's masculine? A woman does. A man doesn't determine masculinity. A woman determines masculinity. And a man determines femininity, you see, I guess. See, because a woman's <laughs> going to say, jump this high. And all those men, if a woman says, y'all got to jump this high. Because it goes back to, to what it. he said. Everybody puts too much freaking importance on sex. Because... In society. No, Society, it, yeah, you just say just a man is. Uh, it's not just society. It's, it's, it's that's what you just said. It's not just no. It's not society. You said it's not, high. It's not society. It's your makeup. Your makeup says multiply. Your makeup says I want to express myself. That's not society. That's nature. Nature says I want to. I want to spread myself. I know, I'm just like, saying in general, like. In general society, men as a group, you like if y'all all had different images. Well, no, it I decides think, you sometimes. Well, no, well, like, men, media, men, men can't determine it because we've seen societies where men have determined masculinity and what is created. It created, it created Sparta. It yeah. created, it created slavery. Mm -hmm. You see, it created. You see, we see all the nations that were created that were ran by men, and men determined what was masculine, and men determined what it meant to be a man. You see, those societies never work out. You see, men don't determine see, what, could, yeah, I masculinity. Say, I masculinity, example. yeah, because femininity is the is the opposite of the masculine. So it has to be this proper balance. So the masculine has to see the reflection or know the request. Feminine is inner energy. Masculine is active energy. You see what I'm saying? So so what inner what inner energy is is what it's saying is it's reserved. You see, or it takes in, or also you take in. So a woman is saying, I'm, I, I will accept this amount, or I will take this. You see what I'm saying? So a man can give that. A man might not have enough. A man might be too much. But a woman will say, this is what I accept. So that right there determines masculinity. Because whichever one of those masculine energies come with her, that's where a flow will be yeah, created. Yeah, right now, society says they're intelligent. Half of them tell y'all to be all manly and stuff. The other half want y'all being feminine. Like, well, well no, like, but that's not what. Hell, y'all gotta be confused. But that's, like, what do you but that's just do? Not, that's not just women determining, though. See, you, you, you're you getting people saying. coming from a hyper, uh, a hyper sexual place. You know, this is coming from, a, a, like I say, this is a, a psych, this is a psychological disorder. This is a mania when you have people that are that are sexually driven or even who identify themselves by their sex. Yeah, that's what if, if I said. If, if, if I identify myself, hi, sex. how are you? I like to have sex with whoever. Why, what, like, what's the importance of that? You see what I'm saying? When you begin to identify yourself with what, what you do sexually, it yeah. shows you don't know who you are because you've taken that on as your identity. That's not your identity. Your identity is you are a creation of the cosmos. You see what I'm saying? Your identity is you are a work made by by everything. You are you are you are created by nature. You you know give wh however you want to put it, but you can't you don't define yourself by an act right. that you do. Right. You see what I'm saying? If if that's the, if you define it by that act, 
then that act needs to be an act that can that can be a supreme act. You see what I'm saying? I say I am of the cosmos. I, why? Because I look at myself. I look at look at how it behaves. I look at how it responds. I look at how it's it's almost a a, a macrocosm to to me. You see what I'm saying? All right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But that's me. You know. But and for for some people, they might look at it and say. Well, you know, I'm in the bedroom with this person, so therefore I am this. Mm. And for me, I don't, I can't see that. Now, what's your name again for the people at home? Oh, Heavy Mahes. Heavy Mahes. Yeah. Heavy man. indeed. You yeah. got some Listen, wisdom over there. Oh man, join the club. They are knowledge. They already know. They already know. The same masters. What's up? I'm gonna go eat, bro. Yeah. 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 Do your thing. Let me see. Uh, we're not promoting. Yeah, we're, we're not, not promoting. promoting. I was just saying yeah. we're not promoting little Tabasco. We, we don't promote none of this. But but yeah, we Tabasco, did. give him a yeah. <laughs> him Tabasco, yeah. 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 I love yeah. your yeah. pie right by the way. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm saying yeah. Take off. Confidence, <laughs> masculine energy, no, manifestation. Yes, yes. Very indistinct. Hey, we got Mystical Breakdown. Oh, yeah. Dang, you got crazy there. And Doha, she has a woman. She does. Mrs. Mrs. Buttersworth, really? <laughs> we have Mrs. Buttersworth on the show. Oh, we got leftovers over here. Um. Anyway. So. Anyway. What? How, what did your journey through comedy start? Like, how did that take place? Because it I mean, hasn't really. Do you want to know the truth? Like, yeah. Like, how did it start? Like, cause one day I just see you posting shit on my Instagram. I'm like, hey, yo, I'm what? Go to her website. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. It was, it was kind of like during Dylan the pandemic, and, and it was like Atlanta Digital Comedy Dylan kind of group. And, mm -hmm. and, and then, I've heard of them. Well, I'm during the pandemic and everything, my site was, uh, we I basically went through a spiritual enlightenment. I didn't know at the time that's what it was, but I kind of like detached myself from yeah. everything. And uh, so this is like beginning 2020, and like I just got off social media. I got off the news, I got away from everything and just, I don't know, just started, there was a lot of things in Louisiana, this was in Louisiana, okay. so then, um, so anyway, so fast forward, What's the website? I finally did something, the I, website. I, I have, I've written and stuff like that, before I went to um, Colorado in August, I decided to have eight kids, I have four hmm? kids, four grandkids, four step kids, so I have all these books that I wanted to finish writing about autism and just different different things, some um, um, about marijuana, a cannabis mm -hmm. cookbook, and different things like that about dosing properly because actually cannabis saved my life. I hated it all of my life. It saved my life in 2005, 2015. What happened? Um, medications that doctors had me on and stuff like that. They, I finally got off of them for on. like fibromyalgia oh. and. Um, Stuff like that. So it's all so, joint pain. Yeah, so. joint all over body ache and, and yeah. stuff and ADD. Which at the time I didn't know I had ADD. I didn't know I had Asperger's actually. So I had only newly been <laughs> diagnosed with autism. Which I have a son who has autism. So so anyway, so during the pandemic, first I had my parents there, and then we went on. Um, so anyway, I got away to Colorado for like a month. And that was near Aurora, Colorado, mm -hmm. where Elijah McClain was killed. And this, if you remember, like when I was planning my trip to Colorado, this is when George Floyd thing happened, oh. was killed. So all these things were like on, like so this on was me. Like, um, like, yeah, so I. February. It was like. February was last year. Yeah, so it was last okay. year, yeah. I mean, so this all kind of kids? started it. Oh, okay. Yeah. But they're grown. Well, but I, I have some that are grown and probably your age, but. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and we do a. Uh, we actually have a show. Well, I had four of them myself. There are four kids, four step kids. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah, I didn't have them all on me. Mm -hmm. okay. well, four is enough. Like, yeah. <laughs> like well, the. Four, you still make They're like Brady Bunch Extreme, I guess. Yeah. We got two extras. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, so, needless to say, the Colorado trip was supposed to be for me. To, when I came back, I was going to say, okay, I either finished one of these like 10 books. Mm -hmm that I have like 80% done, will never finish, where I just quit saying I'm a writer and just go on and go back into flipping properties and real estate and doing whatever other careers I've had over my life. So so basically I was supposed to go to Colorado to finish those books. 
I did not. I did not even pick up the pen to write not one word in any of those books. Because God had a whole different plan. And like I said, it was around the time. There was one book that I've always wanted, I felt like led, like I needed to write and wanted to write about the racial division in the country and things like that. But it never, I could never figure it out. Like I didn't, I didn't know how to start. I didn't know what I, there was something there that I wanted to do, but I didn't know what it was. You know what I mean? Like I just knew somewhere in my life. What did you lose? He, um, the, the so when there. I went there, I one of the very first things that I kind of like really started to open my eyes and wanted to dig further into finding more truths, it was like the ripple effect. I found out one little thing that government or whatever lied about, or you know what I mean? Like it's kind of like the marijuana. I was taught all my life to hate it, mm. but it actually saved my life and it got me back to God. And I'm like, whoa, what else did they lie about? You know what I mean? Like it just is like a ripple effect, like I said. So when I was in Colorado, uh, like the, I was telling your, um, I, um, uh, one of the first things that made me start digging further into my enlightenment or whatever, I didn't know it was an enlightenment at the time. I didn't realize what was going on because I didn't. So basically, it was. I was just born, kind was, of a lot of things that we yeah, see just in our like history epiphany, isn't yeah, really, yeah. Like, yeah, my religion, like yeah. the Baptists, they kept the whole, like I found out what they start, like it's just, so basically right now, I like went against everybody I love and know, yeah, about me. so Colorado, get to the part talking to you, so in Colorado, it said, <laughs> one of the best things, with, well, one of the things that, so when I was in Colorado, I was supposed to be detached from everybody, right, mm -hmm. the only time I would get on, for whatever reason, I mean, I'm sure it was God, but I would get on, and the only thing I would do, I decided I would stay in contact a little bit, just with the Instagram, um, the Atlanta Digital Comedy, and it was because I, one night I was writing in Colorado, I was sitting there trying to write on something, not a book, but it was something that clicked with that, uh, the baby song, and I had been watching you guys, and Atlanta Digital Comedy, and a couple of other, um, I didn't realize at the time they were all black poets and someone like I, it wasn't consciously doing it but I kept being drawn to mm -hmm. so it was, I feel like it was spirit leading me to these you were one of them and like these different creators and I was seeing all these talented people and just like really just as I was learning these different histories and when I was listening to that song over and over again on the uh, not rock star together a uh, bigger picture and it was just like that song, I just wept and wept and wept. I mean, for days, I just, like, just something clicked in me and it was just like, I just, I was just like, so many of like white America has always said like, the things that are sung about in rap songs and stuff, they've made out to like it's, um, to like it's, you know, glorifying uh, all the things. And it, it, as a creator, when I sit there writing, I'm like, I just write my comedy, I just write my things for my own life, even the painful things or whatever. And for whatever reason, it just clicked with me, and I was like, oh my god, you know what I mean? I, like, I got chills. So that was the first time. Like, really I really just really music. no, I've always loved rap music. No, I've always loved. I love all kinds of music. I love music. Music what is are you like. Saying? I, I'm saying. The way the white people in general society since like 70s would look at rap music and things mm -hmm. it was more like they made it like you were more got an understanding of what like the plight of the people making the music yeah it w yeah it wasn't i wasn't looking at it i didn't hear the words the same during this enlightenment i was you know i liked the word you know what i mean like i've always loved you know just like all of them and um but like I said, I've listened to country music, I listen to Christian music. I love music. But I never really when big in the bigger picture in that rock star song came out, because this is when I was in in Colorado. And like I said, all I would do was listen to music. I would listen to y'all. I listen to stories and just listen. Not interact like so that's what I said. You don't even know that I was listening, but I was listening. You know what I'm saying? And like, and you weren't the only one. And it was weird because after this whole enlightenment thing. I'm sitting there feeling these deep connections with people that I really don't know. Like, you had no idea that your <laughs> podcast led to me looking at and, and the um, comedians on Atlanta Digital Comedy. And then 
of Azar King and Grapevine and all these poetry groups and stuff. And I was listening to their stories day and night, and then it dawned on me, like, they don't even know that I was sitting there. Like, they don't know what an so impact they right had. Now? So basically, uh, let's fast forward to now, is because I found out the truth about the religion I was, uh, I mean, I'm a Baptist preacher's kid. <laughs> I have family members that you probably have, just the podcast and everything, right? Yeah, it's podcast. We, we have some sitcom reality show type pitches in the works and different stuff like that. So basically, I'm going, that's what I'm saying. I packed up. I was told, I said, I have a bigger mission in life. I feel like that, like everything in my life has led me to this point. Like I have found my purpose and it, it, it encompasses a lot of things and it sounds crazy. And it wasn't until I identified as being an autistic and I was like, wait a minute, autistics, I saw I saw myself, like I said, my kid, he's, uh, we like the fact that he thinks big and like, like has that kind of faith and without caring what people think. Mm -hmm. And if you look back in the Bible where he used the nobodies, he used the, the, the people that had a bad past. The people, I can't judge other, I'm, I said my, my past doesn't allow me to judge anybody else. And so growing up in a Baptist church, I had no idea about the Holy Spirit. Like they talked about the Trinity, but they left out the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is what spiritually leads us to, and they basically cut that off. And it's so weird. And then I found out actually where the Baptists came from. And it's because they didn't want uh, missionaries that they, something about, it has to do with slavery and stuff. Like these churches were literally divided over racial there's issues. a lot of racial divide and a lot yeah, of and I had, uh, Christian organizations. Right, and I had no idea. And then you would look at it, and it was set up just like the other one is set up. They have a president, they have this, and they have that. And I'm like, what? So basically, long story short, it's like everything, like my husband hates marijuana. Well, it saved my life. I can't not speak about it. I can't not advocate the fact that they made it illegal to put black people in jail to begin with, and I can prove it. And unless it's been redone, undone, there was racism in our system, period. I can prove it. I'm going to talk about that kind of stuff on my podcast. And because literally they're killing us with our food and our medicine. And they're killing y'all just in broad daylight in the damn street. And that shit's got to change, period. And that's what my podcast So I basically, I left everything comfortable to go on the road, to do whatever. Either con Like I literally traded and I don't, I, I left everything. It's me and a camper and a trailer and my autistic kid, and that's it. My husband said, this is your mission in life, not mine. He said, choose a mission or me, and I chose a mission. I said, I've already chose four husbands. Let's go for comedy and... <laughs> Love and, the cool breeze. Yeah. <laughs> and you had no idea what you were talking about. But, no, I'm serious. So, but in, in no, a way, I, mean, I want those creators to know that, you know, did, what's the reason why you're a creator? In some way, you, you want to you, change yeah, the world. You have a dream. You have a message. You yeah. have you want to inspire other people or whatever. Well, I want to be that perfect example of somebody that you had no idea. Somebody else had no idea. And if I go on to be big, do great things that Christ leads me to do with all these different people, I want you to know as a creator, you were part of that. You did change the world, and that's yeah. all it takes. A creator that changes one person changes the world. And the reason why my name is crazy is one reason is. Steve Jobs says it takes the crazy ones to change the world, mm. and it does. It takes the crazy ones that didn't fit in the system that that, you, that they wanted me in. You know, they used to make me do math a certain way. Well, I didn't know I was autistic, and they used to say, if you can't write it out that way, then that, that's not right. Well, the answer's right. I just didn't get the answer the way you wanted me to get the answer. Never made sense to me. Now as a grown adult, I go back and I'm like, they changed math somewhere between when I was in school and so I was like, wait a minute, that system might have stifled me from creating the next math that came along. Yeah, That's I when I started that. realizing the system, I think the that education. A lot of things that are meant to. Uh, the education is, system is made up from better. the time you're like four years old. You're being trained to work for them and be in their control from that time at yes, eight o'clock in the morning until later that in the are afternoon. Built for you to be better are also they also I don't want to they necessarily need an say they have loopholes because there's no such thing as a loophole. I, I want to say there's more than one way to learn. 
Like, yeah. you know how they say there's more than one way to see anything. Yeah, and they... There's more than one way to learn. And they have this all trying to be fit in this this system that but doesn't not, really... I think, I think once we... I think the main thing is we have to stop thinking about they, them, or whoever. Like, if That's that 10% at the top. <laughs> if you understand your process, you have to trust yourself. Right? Uh, the next thing is... Uh, I mean, I try, I, like, I mean, I got my friend with me, like, I, I try to, I, I've learned now that you got to try to find trustworthy people, um, and then, sometimes it ain't necessarily that people ain't trustworthy, they just don't understand the level of, like, I mean, privacy it, 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 that you have, you know what I'm saying, or, like, sometimes it's not, um, it's, man, it's so many elements that go into, like, different kind of, like, I, relationships and building teams, and, like, I appreciate what you're doing. I think it's cool. I think I, I think it's awesome. I said a long time ago, podcast to die. You know what I mean? Like so, I think it's awesome to have another person out here. Just like on this journey. Well, I think that's part of the problem with society. I, I don't think um, there's enough black representation in any. In, I've lived all over this country, and there's like, it's like y'all didn't. There's, uh, I think that's part of the equity problem. Like the businesses, um, there's not enough black. I mean, there's. I'm, I'm, I see. I see a lot of advancement in the past five years. Like definitely. Like I, I agree. You know what I'm saying? I don't like, think that there hasn't been advancement. I think that the or maybe I'm just seeing no, more no, because no, no, I'm no, looking no, for it no. now that I'm like you, looking for you, ones to promote. What you're saying is right and wrong. It's not that it's right or wrong. Yeah. Excuse me. I'm just making my statement. Yeah. I think that the situation is that. We need to learn these things quicker, right? They allow, they allow, well, not just they, we allow a system for us to financially grow through drugs, through crime. Like, and it's so easy to get into it now. Like, it's, well, most, it's because, and there, I'm there, are a lot, there are a lot of communities of people with nothing. The next thing is like, yeah, I don't think the those education people system did. is designed for you to be in debt. Mm -hmm. You said it. It's designed for you to go get a job. Yeah, to go like, work for them, be worker bees, and the financial literacy. Period. Whether you get a job or not is the main thing that will have to. The gap is yeah, ridiculous. it has to improve. The the median household ninety percent of us had grow up. Uh, because think about this. Think about it's how the easy, same for like the last think about 40 how years. Easy it was for you and your mind well, yeah. to jump into this pipe. You don't even think about it. how easy for you. It, it, how easy it was for you to jump into a podcast like this. You just jump straight into it. Do you know how crazy a black woman would never try this shit? Abigail, mm -hmm. would your mama <laughs> ever just go do a podcast by herself? Mm -hmm. with, with her fucking kid in a camper <laughs> never nigga never in her life mm -hmm. that's not how black women move black women uh, why the people, most no, they think I'm crazy too because yeah, it's like rhinoceros <laughs> nigga like straight up real talk a black woman is like rhinoceros it, it, it's not happening that's that's not but like is your culture is different your culture oh, no, is oh no mine think I'm crazy too they're the like you're doing what the, they're like, what think, are you to doing? think like a Steve Jobs, to think that like I could just jumpstart some shit. That's readily like you have that representation throughout your culture all the time. They, motherfucking, they talk about Alexander the Great is a white man. Every single person that is was he in his them too much credit. No, no, no. no. The people, like, what? Think about this: the people who were glorified, the people who propaganda, the people who we have been taught are the greatest people in the world. Have all we've been pushed for these white people. So you like, you don't even have to, you don't even think about it. You don't have to. Because it's, you've been told for so long that you are a great thing. Mm -hmm. so you feel me? Like, think about this. For us, the only thing, the difference between you is you're a woman. If you, and I think that's, that's where it gets through with a lot of white people. I feel like a lot of white women is like, y'all fucked us over too, bitch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Y'all fucked us over yeah, too. It, a lot of things are- We can't vote, yeah, nigga. Like, you want us to just like, wash and yeah, clean all day, nigga? Are, what the fuck? Are, are racial, and a lot of things are class, class, uh, 
there is, I mean, it's, it, here's a statistic for you, 10%, 10% of the top nations, well, 10% of people, mm-hmm. own, nine, own 75% of our entire wealth. That means 90% of us are fighting over 25%. But there's still a lot of money out here. I think that's the thing we're not saying. And the wrong people have them, obviously. You can't think about that, man. Yeah, you everything can. Everything is wrong. We gotta change it. Wrong. There sales. should not like, be homeless people. There should can, be no homeless everything people. Everything could be torn down. Like, there, there's empty buildings and homeless people. How does that even make any logical sense? It doesn't. Profits. Because I'm saying wrong people have money, obviously. I feel like and this is the age for it, though. COVID 19 shut so much shit down. It's like, there's loopholes shut. out here, man. Government shut. There's, there's ways for you to just go get money. Government talking about to take our it's rights like, away. Like, if you trying to make some money, you ain't going to fill out no PPP loan trying to start no business or no shit. You really not trying. I don't know. I ain't feel like PPP long. I, I didn't. I didn't I, get it. See, listen. You trying to start a business, right? Listen. Come on, man. Get to it. Get busy. I, I'm appreciative of. Um, I'm appreciative of people like Steve Jobs because, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this man understand it. She understand. As little black kids. Man, they just keep telling you about a nigga who made everything out of peanuts. It's not fucking funny. What did you say? It's the truth, though. What? Like, when you when you grow up in our, what in our education say. system, in our education uh, system. He's talking about the George old, Washington Carver. George Washington Carver. Yeah, Carver. like, they, the, the, they just keep talking about this one dude who made everything out of peanuts. It's like, okay, that's <laughs> awesome, my nigga. But they don't tell you about the nigga who made the elevator. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they don't tell you about the nigga who made the stop line. They teach us the most they, nonsense they, yeah, things. Yeah, they don't teach none of this shit. But then they tell us that Edison was the greatest inventor ever. Like, this nigga stole from Tesla. <laughs> this nigga was just a rich nigga buying other nigga shit. That don't make you no great inventor. That make you a rich nigga. That, that I mean, that make you a mogul. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, dude, come on, man. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. anyway, I think that um, <laughs> I think that you are doing the right thing with this podcast shit. I see the equipment you got. I did this, this lady is obviously working. <laughs> She's not playing no games. Nigga. I am not playing games. No. She's not playing games. Not with them Karens. No. So yeah. Y'all could make y'all keep making them damn Karen. I for real. It is one of the things that I went. Where are these motherfuckers at? Like, for real, when I started watching them Karen videos, I was like, I, I, no, they don't, if you notice, most of them are like by themselves. Because them bitches would not act like that with me. Like, if I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I would not hang around people like that knowingly. So, exposing you know them, putting them to shame was like one of the, oh my God. I love every one of them. I love the video. Calling it them out. It baffles my mind that people like that. I, that's what I'm saying. Because, well, it used to baffle my mind when I'd watch, oh, like, those teenage movies and people be, like, bullying and, like, being so hard, like, shoving heads down to it. I never no, thought that that stuff happened. But I know, but because I never I experienced I mean, I've got bullied. Kids are demons. My horrible children. <laughs> Let me stop. Kids are not demons. <laughs> they can be. Don't they lie. They can be. Listen, the wrong head. They take all my shit. Y'all, over Christmas, I'll do this. <laughs> I think it was funny. Every damn Christmas, I had like 27 people at my Christmas at our house. Like, relatives, like my kids, my grandkids, my parents, all the, right? We had them all at our house. We even rented the house next door so we could have them all there at the same time. That's a mistake. <laughs> but, but I got so damn mad. I kept going, every time I go to my grandbaby, would be like, honey, we're out of pop tarts. Honey, I'm like, no, there's a box in there. Box after box, empty, empty. This is empty. Go get milk. It's empty. I'm like, oh my gosh, y'all are grown as men. Why are you still doing this shit? But I solved that problem. I found their stash of weed in my office. <laughs> Guess what I did? I took all the weed out, I left the box, put it back like there was something in it. <laughs> Restitution. <laughs> I was like, damn. I was so how, you that. said you had eight kids. How many? Was, how many boys? Four. All my, all four minor boys. You have four boys. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 
bad luck these months. We're in Oregon and Berkeley and the one with me. Oh, okay. Oregon and Berkeley. That out there. Yeah. Two. One of them has a CBD company. Really? Yeah. Come on the podcast. He has microdose. I told you. Oh, okay. I told you I'd send you some. Okay, okay. I will send you some products. See, they they have some hard candies that are really good, but theirs has like a a microdose of THC, so it's a legal Mm -hmm. dose, so it's able to be sent everywhere. If it's three percent THC and it has the CBD. Okay, and then you have the one in Oregon. That's the one in Portland. Oh, that's the one in Portland. Yeah. What's Portland like? You been in Portland? No, I have to go visit. I guess it can be on one of my podcasts. I'm not driving the camera to hell now. My <laughs> that is not, no. I thought it was podcasting. And, yeah, he, he, he ran off my car. Him, can't drive. Don't let him drive. I did not, I did not run off with her car. <laughs> Abigail. Abigail. No, I was in the car. <laughs> okay, look, okay, that's not what I meant. Abigail. Like, yeah. No, there was no car. Help me. Car. Did not no. Take Help me. Car. There was no <laughs> car stealing. <laughs> it was kind of weird. Wait, what did you say? Wait, what did you say? I did not, did not, no, I did not take him. my car. I allowed him to. I said, here. What's wrong with this lady? Actually, I didn't allow you. I asked you to drive. No, I asked to drive. Yeah, that's I was like, yeah, that's kind of, yeah, I was like, yeah, because I'm not familiar with the area, and y'all's Red lights are different than mine. You're sure? I was like, no, I'm like, oh no, big, it's I'm like dro- I drove a bear. back. It was. It, was it is a big vehicle. It's <laughs> well, you gotta let me fix that bitch for real one time. Oh my goodness. Then I'll be stuck yeah. in Atlanta. Mm-mm. No, I wouldn't crash it. <laughs> No, that said every person that crashed. No. <laughs> said, I only like, crashed Hyundai's. The jail pretty much said, I won't get caught. I only crashed Hyundai's. Hyundai's. And Camry's. And Camry's. If it's a rental, that's good. Camry. I anyway. did crash a Camry. No, no, <laughs> But no, no, I did no, finally get no, on stage. No, no, Chevy Malibu's aren't safe around me either. Chevy Malibu? <laughs> I don't, I don't know think why. they're safe for anyone, yeah. really. To be honest, so, are they? <laughs> Look that up. <laughs> but Hyundai is anyway. safe around me. I'm two for two, nigga, in total both times. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I got unlucky. Anyway, this is Cool Breeze Show. Crazy. And I'm crazy. Thank you for coming. Listen, you gotta let me drive with the camper on that bitch one time. Oh, hell no. We'll let you do the tour of the camper. When I come back with the camper, we'll have to do a podcast for the camper. Listen, that, that the camper is like crazy. the cool breeze thing. If you and come on my show, crazy. I gotta drive your car, nigga. Oh, I'm anyway. not endorsing that. <laughs> He's out.